Question 4. Solid sodium hydroxide is a base which dissolves to form an aqueous solution NaOH. Question A. State what is meant by the term base. Please make sure you know how to define both acid and base as it is a popular question as in IGCSC. Question B. State the term given to a base which dissolves to form an aqueous solution. The term given for this would be alkali. And likewise, if you were asked to define alkali, you can say that it is a soluble base. Question C. State the color of thymophthalein in NaOH. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base with approximately a pH of 10. There are several indicators that you should know the change of color when they are added to acidic or alkaline solutions. Thymophthalein is an acid-base indicator that changes color from colorless to blue. Below a pH of 9.3 to 10.5, it's colorless. Above this range, it is blue. So since sodium hydroxide is at a pH of 10, the color here would be blue. Question D. Complete the word equation for the reaction of sodium hydroxide with ammonium chloride. Let's identify the chemical equation first. Sodium hydroxide consists of Na plus and OH minus ions, whereas ammonium chloride consists of NH4 plus and Cl minus ions. So for the product, you will have Na plus and Cl combining, giving you NaCl. Now you're left with NH4 plus and OH, but you will get two products out of this. The first one is H2O, so OH and 1H from NH4 is taken out, leaving you with NH3. Okay, now that we have our chemical equation, we can write the word equation for this reaction. Question E. Some metal oxides react with sodium hydroxide. Part 1. State the term given to metal oxides which react with bases such as sodium hydroxide. Elements can be classified as either metals or non-metals. And when they react with oxygen, there are four different types of oxide that will be formed. These are some of the examples for each type of oxide. However, amphoteric oxide is the only oxide that can react with both acids and bases. As you can see, there are two examples of amphoteric oxide here that is reacting with sodium hydroxide. So the term given here would be amphoteric oxide. Part 2. Name a metal oxide which reacts with sodium hydroxide. There are two common examples for amphoteric oxide which is aluminium oxide and zinc oxide. So you can say either one of this. Just an extra reminder, when they ask you to name something, make sure you name out the whole name of the compound or element instead of writing their chemical formula like this. Question F. Ethanoic acid CH3COOH is a weak acid. Part 1. Complete the dot and crest diagram in figure 4.1 of a molecule of ethanoic acid. You're only required to fill in dot or crosses on the outermost shell of each atom. So the first step here that I would do is to write down the electron configuration for each atom. And the next step here would be to identify how many more electrons are needed in order for this atom to become stable. I'm going to start out by filling in the left side of the carbon. Okay, so if I were to look at this individually, these are what the outermost shell would look like. After them fitting together, you would see that all the three hydrogen atoms are filled with two electrons on their first shell, which is complete. And carbon now has seven electrons on the outermost shell and requires just one more electron to become stable. Okay, now we're going to get into the right side of the carbon. Okay, now we'll repeat the same steps by filling in the outermost shell with electrons for the individual atoms. An ethanoic acid has a COOH bond like this. So here shows double bond, meaning that there will be four electrons shared between the carbon and the oxygen atom. And the other carbon to oxygen atom only require two electrons shared within each other. So this is what it would look like. And the hydrogen here only has one electron and it requires another electron from oxygen to become stable. Okay, we're done. And lastly, we can combine the two carbons with each other. Since both of these carbons have seven electrons on their outermost shell, they both require one electron more to become stable. And now both the carbons are complete with eight electrons. Make sure that each hydrogen atoms have a complete outer shell of two electrons. 
and carbon and oxygen also have a complete of 8 electrons. Part 2. Suggest the pH of dilute ethanoic acid. Since ethanoic acid is a weak acid, your pH value could range anywhere within 3 to 6. Part 3. Complete the symbol equation to show the dissociation of ethanoic acid. CH3COO is the anion and the hydrogen is the cation. So when they dissociate, they would form like this. And make sure to include your reversible symbol because this reaction can happen both ways. The next step is to check whether or not they are balanced. All of them are in a ratio of 1, so that's complete and that's how you get a complete 3 marks. Part 4. Write the ionic equation for the reaction when an acid neutralizes a soluble base. An acid is a proton donor whereas a base is a proton acceptor. Neutralizing acid and base will give you water as another product. So this is what your ionic equation would look like. Question G. In a titration, 25 cm3 of 0.08 mole dm3 equals potassium hydroxide is neutralized by 20 cm3 of dilute sulfuric acid. You are given with your chemical equation. Calculate the concentration of H2SO4 in grams per dm3 using the following steps. So the first step is to calculate the number of moles of potassium hydroxide. The information given for potassium hydroxide is the volume and concentration. There are two formulas related to mole. One is mass over the molar mass and the second one is concentration by volume. So since we have the concentration and volume, we are going to use this formula. The concentration is 0.08 mole per dm3 and the volume given is 25 cm3. So we have to convert this to dm3. Dividing by 1000 giving you 0.025 dm3. And your final answer is 0.002 moles. Or you could also write your answer as 2 times 10 to the power of negative 3 moles. Step 2. Determine the number of moles of H2SO4 which react with the KOH. We can use ratio to solve this question. Looking at your chemical equation, we can see that 2 potassium hydroxide reacting with 1 mole of sulfuric acid. So let's use that here. From the first part of the question, we know that the number of moles of potassium hydroxide being used is 0.02. So if we use ratio to find out the mole, we will get a mole of 0.001 mole. Part 3. Calculate the concentration of H2SO4 in mole dm3. The question has given you the volume for sulfuric acid, which is 20 cm3. And from the second step, we know that the number of moles reacting would be 0.001. So we can use the same formula to get the concentration of sulfuric acid. Your mole here is 0.001 over volume. Convert centimeter cube into dm cube by dividing 1000, giving you 0.02. And your concentration here would be 0.05. Always check your units since the unit here is in dm3. Make sure that your volume is converted to dm3 as well. The last step, calculate the concentration of H2SO4 in gram dm3. So you have already obtained the concentration in mole dm3 and now you are required to convert it into gram per dm3. This can be done easily by multiplying the mass of sulfuric acid per mole. When you do this, you are left with gram per dm3. The molar mass of sulfuric acid is 97 gram per mole and you will get a value of 4.85 gram per dm3. Converting this to two significant figures, you will get 4.9 gram per dm3. Make sure you know to obtain the atomic mass for each atom from your periodic table. Question 5. Propane and propane both react with chlorine. Whenever I am given with a compound, I always like to write down the chemical formula for the compound in my question itself. Well, you don't have to do it, but this could be helpful giving you more information about the question. Question A. When a molecule of propane C3H8 reacts with chlorine in the presence of ultraviolet light, one atom of hydrogen is replaced by one atom of chlorine. So what is happening here is that propane reacts with chlorine in the presence of ultraviolet light and one atom of the hydrogen is replaced by one atom of chlorine. Your product now is chloropropane and HCl.
Back to the question part 1. State the term given to reactions in which one atom in alkene is replaced by another atom. So this process here is called substitution. Part 2. State the purpose of ultraviolet light in this reaction. The purpose of the UV light is to provide activation energy. Part 3. State the term given to any reaction which requires UV light. When there's presence of UV light, we call this type of reaction a photochemical reaction. Part 4. Write the simple equation for the reaction between propane and chlorine. So back to our reaction previously whereby we have propane reacting with Cl2 to give us chloropropane and HCl. So this is how we're going to express our simple equation. Question B. A molecule of propane C3H6 is unsaturated and will react with chlorine at room temperature. Part 1 state why propane is an unsaturated molecule. Make sure you're familiar with the terms saturated and unsaturated. All alkane compounds are saturated whereas alkenes are classified as unsaturated because they contain double bond of carbon, whereas alkane only have single bonds of carbon. Part 2 Give the structural formula of the product for this reaction. Okay, let's write down our reaction. Okay, so here you can see the molecule of propene and chlorine. And when they react with each other, your double bond is broken to fit in chlorine inside of the molecule. And this is your product. We are required to write the structural formula for this. Okay, let's see what we have here. First, we have CH2Cl followed by... CHCl and lastly you have got CH3 and that's your structural formula. Question C. Propane undergoes addition reactions with steam. There are two possible products A and B. Draw the displayed formula and name each product. When alkene reacts with steam which is water, we refer to this reaction as hydration whereby the product here would be alcohol. But it mentions here that there are two possible products, meaning that they want you to display the isomer for this alcohol. Now, propane will form propanol. You could have a propanol that looks like this, and we name this as propan-1-ol, or another type of propanol which looks like this, whereby the functional group is attached to the second carbon. So we can name this as propan-2-ol. Moving on to the last question, question 6. Carboxylic acids can be converted to esters. This process is done by adding alcohol and you will get ester plus water. Okay, question 1. Name the ester formed when butanoic acid reacts with ethanol. When naming an ester, we will combine the alcohol name and the carboxylic acid. We place the alcohol at the front followed by the carboxylic acid. Alcohol being used here is ethanol, so it will become ethyl. And butanoic acid will be butanoid. And this would be the name of your ester, ethyl butanoid. Question B. Identify the other product formed in this reaction. So your other product here is water. Question C. Deduce the empirical formula of the ester formed. Empirical formula would be your simplest ratio of the compound form. And the compound formed here is ethyl butanoid. Okay, let's identify the molecular formula of ethyl butanoid first. When butanoic acid reacts with alcohol, the OH from carboxylic acid and the H from alcohol will be removed. That's what gives you water. And you are left with ethyl butanoid. You have 6C, 12H followed by 2 oxygen. So the simplest ratio for this would be C3, H6 and O. Question D. PET is a polyester. Part of the structure of PET is shown in figure 6.1. Part 1, circle 1 repeat unit of this polymer. So you can notice the repeated pattern for this and you can circle either one of this. Part 2, draw the structure of the monomers which make up PET. Draw the functional groups using displayed formula. Okay, so we have here one repeat unit of this formula and you can see that it contains two different functional groups of carboxylic acid and alcohol. So now we have to draw the structure of these monomers individually with their functional group displayed. The functional group of carboxylic acid is COOH and the functional group for alcohol is OH. Part 3 state the type of polymerizations used in making PET. 
we have two types of polymerization. The first one is addition and condensation. Addition is when repeated monomers like alkenes are joined together. And condensation is when monomers of different functional groups join together to form polymers and water. So we can see here we have two different functional groups. So the type of polymerization here is condensation. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching till the end. I hope it was worth your time. If you find this video helpful, please like, comment and subscribe to my channel to support my efforts. Thank you.